My name is Laura Pearson and I make hand molded pottery in Japan. I'm interested in the rituals we choose to undertake in our daily life today. Without going into too much research, it is safe to say the majority of us choose to take a few minutes a day to drink a cup of tea or coffee. For me, I like to enjoy a morning cup of coffee alone, in silence. I wake up before the rest of my family, so I can have this time to relax and contemplate, or not, just think about nothing, but look at the sky or nature from my window. I use a hand-molded mug that I made, and I enjoy touching the textures that I added to the outside. The main goal for my pottery is to give the user an intimate and personalised experience. Each piece I make is unique, making each one special in that nobody else will know what it is like to use the piece that I made for you. The textures in my pieces hopefully become a grounding form of texture therapy. So when held, each piece evokes the feeling of textures in nature. And hopefully, holding my work brings about the same feelings of satisfaction and peace when out in nature itself. I am strongly influenced by my natural environment and the textures in my immediate surroundings. I want to show you how I make my hand molded and carved mugs inspired by the limestone rock formations near my house. These formations can be found all around Kamakura and sometimes you can find that they have been carved out to provide storage space for something. I love the textures and how you can see the sediment in layers. I also love the plant life and insects the environment supports. This one actually supports my house. So I always like to start off by wedging the ball of clay, which I have pre-measured to make my piece. For a large mug, which holds 450 milliliters, I start off with 500 grams of clay. I use a rolling pin to roll out a basic cup shape. I use the same method to make my hand molded chawans, which I have posted a video about previously. When I am slapping the clay onto the rolling pin, I am feeling the thickness of the clay and trying to slap it so the walls are more or less even all the way around. I push the clay down the rolling pin to get a taller piece. I also try not to push the clay too hard that the bottom tears. When I roll the cup, I hold the base so that once again it doesn't tear through. Then I start to widen out the base of the cup on the wheel. First I start with my rolling pin, pushing out to my supporting hand and turning slowly as I go. I make sure the rim is wet, as this can dry out faster than the rest of the clay and crack. Whilst I'm going round, I am compressing the rim and following the natural organic line that formed when I rolled out the clay. I am also stretching it out slightly to get the rim circumference closer to the desired size. I then start to push out the body of the cup with my thumb against my supporting hand. Naturally, the clay becomes thinner at the top and a lot of weight is left at the base. The finished wet clay size is 12 centimeters wide by 11.5 centimeters tall. I then turn it over to create the rock textures at the base of the mug. This evens out the thickness of the walls throughout the mug.
I am looking for an earthy sandy texture that you don't get from a slicing motion. So I use a peeling motion. I turn it back over and continue to texturize the body of the mug with peeling and sweeping motions to emulate the layers of sediment in the rock. Sometimes little holes appear if too much clay comes away. But they can be filled back up pretty easily as the clay is still quite soft at this stage. I am thinking about these textures as I work. I then work on further thinning of the base and walls and making them smooth. This is a large mug, but I don't want it to be too heavy. I go in with a little water to smooth out any carving marks and to compress the inside. I then work on the lip. I take the edge off with a scalpel and smooth it out. I want it to be comfortable to drink from. I add water again as I don't want it to dry faster than the rest of the mug. At this point I stamp the base. Once the mug has dried a little bit I pull the handle. I want to make sure the connection of the handle is secure, so I score and slip the connection area. This brings that area closer to the moisture content in the handle and allows the clay to blend together more easily and also prevents cracking when drying. I start with a rolled out tapered handle about 12 centimeters in length. The connection point at the top measures 2.5 by 2 centimetres. I then blend the handle in and smooth out the connection. I pull the handle and hold the cup gently over a bowl. I then connect it to the bottom by smoothing out the two sides and pushing down the bottom. I backfill the top of the connection to make sure it is really secure and blend it to the mug. I usually work in batches of 10 Timing wise, this works out best for me as I complete each mug and then go back to my first which has dried enough for me to add the handle. But each day is different and the humidity can affect what needs to be done when. Pottery seems to be a lot about understanding how to work with the different drying stages. Once they have been bisque fired, I clean each one and sand any rough spots. I make sure no dust or bisque pieces are inside before I start glazing. I then give the rock texture a light iron oxide wash just to bring out those textures and give it a similar colour to the rocks outside.
With a sponge, I make sure there are no harsh lines and the wash sinks into the cracks. I usually pour the glaze on the inside, but I really enjoy layering and painting the glaze to create more texture and create more visual interest. Here, I am using a clear mixed with an ice crack glaze. This is the finished look. I find the soft variations in colour remind me of the rock formations that I love. And because it is moulded by hand, it is so satisfying to hold. Touching the textures bring me back to nature. I hope you like them. To see more of my designs, visit my shop at OceanRidgeKiln.com.